and welcome to the stream. My name is Ross. This is a Live Love to Play and a live recording of For the Love of, a periodic side podcast where we get, get together and talk about all the things we geek out about. Joining me today are a couple friends from the Real Super Geeks podcast, Sunsail. Hello, everybody. Wheelie Pike himself, Justin. Hello. The man, the forehead, Travis. I'm a forehead now. <laughs> it is quite cool. Well, either a forehead or a fidget spinner. We haven't figured out what yet. Put the bean back on. Joining, and joining us from my Twitch friends, Nick. A.K.A. Dayspring. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I'm so glad to be able to hang out with all of you here. And today we come together to talk about the console wars, the ongoing rivalry between Xbox, PlayStation, and everything in between. So tonight we'll start with PlayStation. Uh, this past week they released all their their they released and launched the PS5. First, uh, re uh, releasing their two separate console versions, the the big well, pre-orders at least the disc drive and everything else 4k 8k ray tracing and all the other bells and whistles you'd expect from a new gen console and it's slimmed down but no less capable uh all digital version so what did you guys think about the playstation let's start with you nick um i th <laughs> as is with everything else that tried to get that tried to get released this week i think all of the big tech companies need to get their act together in regards to um, preventing bots and scalpers and preventing, you know, the, the influx of, you know, servers crashing, you know, because Newegg was having trouble with some stuff that they were doing. I know all these other places were just getting swamped. So unfortunately I would love to sit there and say that, you know, technology wise, good bad or otherwise yet but from just a just from an availability standpoint it is it was absolutely this gen is probably one of the worst launches that they've had because nobody can find it nobody can get it because they're all ending up on on ebay somehow oh yeah they've um they they definitely uh messed up as far as the pre-order fiasco is concerned um i actually uh watched the playstation 5 presentation um and they straight up said like pre-orders will start tomorrow and well retailers decided well we're gonna start pre-orders today and it was very much just this i remember a, like a video from young yeah just going into detail on this whole fiasco because apparently like PlayStation or Sony, I should say, uh, promised that um, they would have, um, you know, the they would they would give out ample uh, notice to the people who wanted a PlayStation Five and wanted to pre-order it, and they said, "Hey, just register here on this site that we're giving you. We're going to send you an email, and you will know when everything is going down." And people went to this and they lowered their guard because they figured, okay, I'm in a safe, I'm in a safe spot. I'm going to know when all this is happening. And they, they weren't safe. I mean, Sony just, they blundered this like incredibly. I'm actually kind of shocked, like shocked at it because they actually had a very good gen. They had a pretty good run with the PlayStation four. I figured they'd be, they'd be on their game here and they just, Kind of, they've dropped the ball. You would think, you would think, because uh, NVIDIA last week, NVIDIA last week had their launch of the 3080. So you would have thought that knowing that they were having a launch this week and looking at all of the trouble that they had, that NVIDIA had with Newegg and Amazon and their own web stores and everything, that that would have been you know, some form of indication that we're going to get hit and it's going to come in hard. And it doesn't look like they sat there and learned from, you know, everybody else, you know, to start. And yeah. from what I heard, PlayStation 5, they cut down um, production from 15 million to 11 million units 
for by by I'm trying to remember what the actual when that date was if that was by the end of 2020 or not but they cut down the amount of available units so that right there is auto inflating the the need because the the supply is going down so it'll be really interesting to see what happens Prior to the the start of the show, you were telling us about how bots were doing a lot of the buying up, and you shared an interesting anecdote about about what some people are doing to combat that. You want to share that with the? With oh, sure. Um, so there was a there was a lot of evidence. Now, Nvidia said that they are going through a lot of their own cards. So just to kind of back it up, Nvidia launched their three thousand series graphics card last week. May you know they're talking like major levels of performance for you know, the previous gens teared down pricing. So think of it this way. You've got a, a 3070 that has the 2080 Ti performance for $500. The so 2080 Ti was a $1,200 card. So just from a paper standpoint, the desire on this was massive. You had a lot of people kind of being able to get in there and, and get that kind of performance. They said, okay, as of 6 a.m. on, I think it was Thursday of last week, we're going to go through and we're going to open up pre-orders. And they did the exact same thing that Sony did. We're going to auto notify you when the, when sales, when everything goes live, I was sitting there watching the NVIDIA page from, it went from six o'clock uh, Pacific time to six Oh one Pacific time. It went from coming soon to sold out. They got hammered. Yeah. And then, so all of these bots, so there's a couple of sites that are out there and what they'll do is they, they run these scripts and allow people to sit there and buy five, 10, 15. I had heard reports of somebody got to buy 40 of these things. Jesus Christ. $700 card, 40 of them. Then they go and they turn it over to eBay and say, okay, well, we're going to take this $700 card and we're going to sell it for $1,200 or more. So somebody sat there and came through and said, you know what, I'm going, if you want to use bots and, and kind of take that from the actual gamers and the ones you want it, I'm going to do the opposite. So this guy wrote a, a script that would go to eBay, create fake accounts and automatically bid up the prices of all of these cards. So it's not unusual to see something like a 3080 going for $30,000. So they Jesus uh, Christ. they want to play dirty. Gamers are going to play dirty. So they That's did. So awesome. if you yeah, actually go through, you'll see there was one. Somebody said that it that it actually sold for seventy thousand dollars. I Holy certainly hope not. Oh. I hope no one was that dumb. But people are sitting there going, they're trying to. I mean, the demand on it is stupid. I went. I happened to browse through it just before we got on. People are selling just a picture of. The graphics card <laughs> trying to sit there and bait some of these guys into it, um, like it's it's really it's really so. You, you know, you would think these companies would have the foresight to uh, put in protection for limit one per customer. You would think that would be a common sense strategy to put into their script to where you know to go by IPs and just make it to where you know once you hit sale, that's it. You can't touch it for twenty four more hours. At I mean, least on the initial hard. run, right? I mean, right. it's not that hard to script in, and I mean, any web IT person with half a brain can do this stuff. Justin, what are your thoughts on the PS Five? Uh, they dropped the ball big time. What about um, the console? Uh, I mean, the console looks beautiful, and I mean, hopefully they can get their act together and get the supply back up because, uh, I mean, it, it looks great. It, it, it's going to be a popular console. I mean, the consoles this year are just uh, jam-packed with performance. Uh, son, we haven't heard from you yet. How, what do you think? I'll, I'll be completely honest. I feel like the, the PlayStation 5 is going to make me run test chambers and give me a portal gun. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I, I really do. It it really does have that portal vibe to it, and it's it weird. Does. It does. Um, the games that are slated for coming out are really actually decent, but I mean, I don't have a console right now as it is that's current gen, so I'm not really. I'm not really looking at getting a next gen console at, 
it right now either. I mean, at this point, I want a new computer first. <laughs> so, well, here's the, I mean, here's the thing that I've got about the launch is they've come out and said that many of the the launch titles are going to be also available on PS4. So they're launching concurrently. Oh, so, man. I... Sorry, like, I'll let you finish. No, no, I mean, it's, just, it, it's, it's interesting because they said that Spider-Man is going to be is going to launch concurrently PS4 and 5. I think they also said that God of War when that comes out in 2021 is going to be concurrent and Horizon um Forbidden West is also going to be a concurrent uh launch. So they're putting out they're putting out launch titles on two separate platforms at the same time. I mean, I get some of it because they're also saying if you buy it for the PS4, you'll get it for the PS5, which is really nice. They're taking from Microsoft's, um, you know, play anywhere type of mentality where if you buy the it on smart PC, delivery you play it on Xbox, you know, good. But I think that they are shooting themselves in the foot a little bit by, you know, reducing because like I bought a PlayStation because I wanted to play some of those games because they weren't coming to PC. Little that I know that half of those games that I wanted to play came to PC six months later. But <laughs> well, in the case of a few, it took a couple of years, you know. But you know, they're automatically from the get go saying that when these games come out, they're going to be on PlayStation Four and Five. What uh, what incentive do I have to go out and drop money on a new console if I can use the one that I've got to play the games that I want? Well, this is prettier. This is this is actually mm -hmm. something Sony has done for a while in between uh, PlayStation generations. Um, the first couple of launch titles, even even being anticipated, have always kind of been dual released in a new console cycle because they usually maintain support for the old console for going on a couple of years. Uh, now, I... I believe that they've started scaling that back for the PlayStation 4 specifically but I, I, they're still going to maintain that that kind of that that kind of dual release ethic well let's look at the the releases for the PS5 we've got uh, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, Day Spring I know you played Spider-Man I, mm -hmm. I haven't played it yet but this excites me I love the you character should. of Miles so what what's that, Travis? I said you, you should. should. Play it. I plan you should to play Spider Man. The time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Horizon Forbidden West is probably is the one I'm looking forward to the most. Day Spring, I've been watching you play it. Uh, play the play Horizon Zero Dawn. Absolutely fantastic game. Outstanding effort by Guerrilla Games, who are previously known for Kill Zone of all things. Uh, the port was a little playing. rough, but it 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 maintains a lot of the original aesthetic. It, but they had a rough launch. Yeah, uh, Ratchet and Clank looked a uh, rift apart. That actually looks like fun. I like that old style of uh, 3D platformer that uh, that became popular in the uh, in the N64 era. Uh, Gran Turismo Seven. Nah, I'm not much of a racing mm. game guy. Mm -hmm. My friends will get into that one. Oh, it's, it's hugely popular. I know a lot of people like it. Sackboy, a big adventure. So nice to see him coming back for the next gen. Returnal. I don't really know anything about this one. Don't know. Deathloop, Godfall, NBA 2K21. Deathloop's the uh, Bethesda game. Fuck oh, NBA 2K. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh -huh. Death, Death Deathloop is the Bethesda game, and it's supposed to be a PlayStation exclusive. Well, it still and, uh, should. Be. We'll get the into that, but it, is, it will be everything that is promised as exclusive will stay exclusive. But we'll get into that in a little bit. So, what do you guys think of the the quote unquote opening exclusive lineup? Uh, uh, I've got some uh, words. Um, go for it, Travis. Part of me is. I applaud consumer-friendly practices like this. Um, I am in full support of cross-gen. Um, the only thing that really grinds my gears about it all is the fucking fandom. Um, 
<laughs> I try to stay out of war talk. I do. I try. But, I mean, I watch when I watch these presentations, it's impossible not to see the chat, you know, erupting. Oh, Xbox dead. Xbox sucks. You know, that kind of thing. Or PlayStation sucks. PlayStation down the drain. It's, it's everywhere. But, I mean... One of the talking points of the PlayStation crowd was like, oh, we've got all the exclusives. We've got all the true exclusives. We've got all these, like, PlayStation's going next gen. Like, they're focusing on the hardware of the PlayStation 5. They're going all out. This stuff isn't going to be on the, playable on the PlayStation 4. Fast forward, you know, when they slip the quiet little announcement, oh, by the way, this is going to be on PlayStation 4 as well, you know, uh, and I'm just <laughs> sitting here like, well, I am pretty sure that the PlayStation fandom will ignore this and will, will you know, raise Sony for being so consumer friendly while ignoring the fact that Xbox pretty much straight up announced that they'd be doing the exact same thing. I also can't help but find it very funny that a lot of PlayStation exclusives are coming to PC now and that was mm -hmm. one of the big Eventually. talking points of the PlayStation fandom as well. Xbox has no true exclusives. They're all on play. They're all on PC. Why should I get an Xbox? It's like, oh, shut the fuck up. You guys are just... You can't win with them. You can't win with them. Interestingly enough, the reverse happened. When, uh, when what we talked about... When, when, what we're going to talk about later with Bethesda happened... All of the PS4 fanboys and PS5 fanboys started losing their minds because <gasps> they they they're going to take away Deathloop. Uh okay, sure. Now you know how it feels to be uh, you know run around by another fandom, huh? <laughs> Any parting thoughts for the PlayStation? From a I got one. So from a technical standpoint, from a technical standpoint, because I think that's kind of where you were where you were trying to lead us and we really kind of went elsewhere. Yeah. Well, the a, is mm. is the most recent thing, and that's what's on our mind. From a technical standpoint, I think they are they are on par with where the Xbox is. They are both roughly able to you know hit the same frame rates they're both able to hit the same resolutions at those frame rates um i think that the big thing that i've got form factor is an issue so playstation 5 you can you can put on your side on its side which is fine it'll run whereas xbox kind of you know they're they're getting themselves out from being able to kind of put it into a into an entertainment center but from a technical standpoint, you know, they are doing, I don't want to say next gen stuff because it, you know, everyone, everything is next gen with this, with this thing. But one of the things that they're doing is a way to, that NVIDIA is also doing with their graphics card of being able to kind of stream textures and everything, bypassing the CPU, putting it straight into the GPU memory and getting it to run there. NVIDIA is doing the same thing. So what it does is it frees up the CPU to do other things. So much like has always been the case with consoles over the years, the first games are not going to take advantage of it. It's going to be, they're going to be okay. Then as time kind of goes on and people start developing for it and people start really kind of pushing the hardware, you're really going to see some lookers, you know, and then as TVs kind of kind of move on, you know, 4K 120 is kind of the standard right now. 8K, I don't think we're ever going to see, you know, as a mainstream thing. Because if you think about it, 4K is four 1080p screens worth of pixels. 8K is 16, if I remember, if my math is right, 16 1080p screens worth of pixels. It's a lot yeah. of and processing. We still, and we still can't see Amy Wong's lewd tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I got that reference. <laughs> so, nice. From nice. a technical standpoint, I think I think PlayStation is in a is in a good spot. You know, I think it's an interesting form factor. I think it looks good. I think they've got a lot of, you know, the idea around we're going to push hardware, you know, they're using AMD for stuff and AMD has been a good partner for them. So I think 
it's going to be a little while before we see some games that really kind of push that hardware, but I think they're in a good spot. Of the two, which one, uh, if you're going to get one, which one are you leading towards, the standard or the digital? <laughs> the pro my problem with so if you go partial i mean the one thing is you've got the the standard is a hundred dollars more so and it's a if i remember right it's an ultra hd disc drive so you can actually play uhd dvds which there are they're starting to become more ubiquitous is that worth a hundred dollars? Well, if you look at like eBay and whatnot uh, or Amazon, eh, you know, you're, you're looking at two or $300 for a UHD drive. So that right there is just a start. I kind of like having a, a physical disc, you know, and especially if you're on kind of a metered connection, you know, or you're paying overages, having a disc versus digital is, you know, it's going to save you something. For those of us that are blessed with with you know fiber and no download speeds or no and no download restrictions, young and children who like to watch stuff again and again over and over again until it, what's on the yeah. screen has no meaning. <laughs> I you know whichever one I can find is probably the best answer because I'm, I'm sure they're still going to be pretty scarce come even come Christmas. I think that's going to be like that like how the Nintendo was when it first launched and all of these other consoles that are launching right before Christmas, it's going to be scarce until, until after that. So I think it's going to end up being what I can find. I sure hope um, they fix the pre-order situation before Christmas or it's going to happen all over again. Justin, which one are you leaning towards? Um, I think I'm going to go for the Xbox because... Um, uh, we're have... just PlayStation right now. Which of the two oh. models is more appealing to you? Well, I mean, I'm not really that big of a PlayStation person, but I would have to go for the light <laughs> because, I mean, physical media is really going by the wayside right now. You're not going to have this for much longer. I, I mean, everything else is downloadable at this point, so, I mean, why not? Well, here's, oh, a, question. But... here's a question for you, though. Where do you stand on ownership of games? Okay, so when you think about it, when you've got a physical game, it's yours. You own it. Whereas if it's digital only, you own it, but you can't resell it. Like you couldn't go to GameStop and go, okay, here's a $60 game, and they give you a $5 credit. Um, <laughs> let's be honest, that's what happens. Bucks 25 Yeah. You know, but, but think about credit. it. But think about it. So say Steam at some point, you know, says we're shutting down. And all, and you own all of those digital games. But if the if the distribution mechanism for it goes away, they go away. So what is your what is your thought on you know physical versus digital when it comes to something like that? Well, sure, there's going to be you know some uh, issues, but Steam would also face legal issues because technically they had to provide access to those if you own it legitimately. Um, they could face some serious legal issues if you just up and shut down. Um, and, and there's a lot of catch twenty twos with that. I do too. <laughs> I see. I see cats. I, I see saw, cats. I heard it. I heard yeah. it. He's behind the head. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say. I'll say this. The for your your steam analogy is is somewhat apt but also somewhat incorrect because as long as you have the game downloaded on your computer you 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 actually have the game on your computer unless it's like an internet connection based game you can play it offline on steam uh, or unless it's connecting to whatever game company it's it's run through as an online source instead of through steam but Stadium. See, here, here's the problem with most games now, though. Most of the games that are coming out are going to require some type of connectivity for, you know, verification reasons, or uh, you have to have this, online accounts. This is a, a wonderful topic, but we're way we're off. Way topic. off. <laughs> <laughs> the train. Uh, I'm of sorry. The two yeah. consoles, which one are you most interested in? The, light, the discless or disc version of PlayStation yeah. Five. 
Son? Uh, I would probably have to say the disc version. I mean, I'm sure, you're getting the, you know, if you get the discless version, cool. You can download all your whatever the stuff. But, like, these consoles are always marketed as entertainment platforms, not just gaming consoles. You know, I want the disc tray to stick my HD DVD in and watch a movie. Agreed. So that's 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 where I stand on it. <laughs> Travis, um, as far as PlayStation Five is, um, I'm going to take my time before I make any kind of decision like that. I'm probably going to lean towards a disc drive because I just I'm an old school man who prefers physical media, but I just, right now I have little to no incentive for a PlayStation 5. People will boast about the exclusives, but almost none of them really interest me. They just don't reach me, and um, I just, I don't know. I wish PlayStation the best of luck. I'm feeling they're going to have a really good uh, good holiday season, but um, yeah. When I get it, if I get it, because the one exclusive I used to buy it for is coming to Xbox finally. <laughs> um, uh, it'll probably be disk drive when and if I get it. I'm still not overly fond on how it looks. It, I've especially with some of the leaked photos that have come out to actually like showing it in real life and not renders. It's like Jesus Christ, this thing is thick. <laughs> Bit too much modern art for you. <laughs> too much modern art. As for me, I've I'm actually leaning towards the the digital version since I I have a PS4 Pro that is still pretty pretty beautiful when it runs its games. As many of you saw as when you hung out during my Death Stranding uh, streams, uh, so I'd, I'd I'd get that as a supplement to my PS4. So un unless something happens to that, I don't see myself getting the disc version. Uh, and with that, I think we'll wrap up our PlayStation segment of the show and move on 